2018 Hemsedal up here at uh, this lake that I just circled on Valvatten and there's a little parking lot there that I did some things out of uh, for a little, a little reference there's a another kiting spot up here called uh, Eldervatna but zooming in parking lot just under Valvatten the first day I did the kiting trip up here to the not to the top, but as far as I could go without getting into too many rocks with my kite. And right there, something happened, which I'm going to talk about later. But here's um, a little bit of the trip upwards. I was pretty happy. So, just cruising up the hill. It was uh, real light winds. That's an ozone frenzy 14 square meter uh, version 10 so the last last of the frenzies and um, really liked it really light winds but the kite still developed a lot of power so I was going a little up uphill here and stopped just to figure out what should I do should I go down should I go up with the kite I wasn't sure but then I thought it was so much fun going up I wanted to keep going up so I just started heading up the hill again and um, as I kept going up I just decided to to go ahead and when I got to the top pop out the um, the safety release and drop the kite and pack it down in its bag and then just free ride down and I didn't have any poles and I found out that I ski like a dork without poles so I'm not used to that but, um, but another thing happened that uh, while I just after I dropped the kite and was kind of dealing with it all I got a phone call and I took my phone out of my pocket and stuck it in my helmet it was my dear wife we talked a little bit and then uh, she hung up and and since I was kind of busy with the kite, I left it in my helmet and uh, forgot about it. So what ended up happening was uh, I didn't find out my phone was gone until I got farther down the hill. So here's the release. Just pop the chicken loop. Bar flies out. Kite just kind of folds up in a, into a piece of laundry and falls out of the sky. Works really well. So then I come into the bar, just attach the uh, safety line there so the kite stays in a position where it's um, folded up and won't fly. Although if I think I was to do that again, I would have just gone ahead and wrapped up all that line instead of just that one part there with the loop. The idea of maybe keeping the kite a little more compact. And it was a little bit of work to to fold up the 14 square meter. It, it worked, but uh, I think if I'd left that line farther in. So I wind it all up. Now at this point I've uh, I've lost my phone in the snow there, but don't know it yet. And then uh, the kite in the backpack, head down the hill. Like I said, I found I ski like an idiot. Uh, without poles, it was really amazing uh, the difference that made. I had to kind of figure out how to fake having poles in my brain. Um, just wasn't planned. I had folding poles in my car. I could have easily taken them with me, but I hadn't planned this little ski down the hill thing. So it was still fun until I found out I lost my phone. And then there was no way to try to go back up and get it and you know call it or something because I had no other phone to call it with and I was I was alone that day so uh, but it was still still a great day I just put up the kite and kept kiting and forgot about my stupid phone for the most part and then the next day came back to uh, same spot same parking lot there's my phone up there in the snow somewhere and uh, then I started a trip from here the parking lot again with my friend Bent and his family and we cross country skied in around the back side of the mountain where my phone was sleeping there's a little cabin at that X that was just closed up and then I did a snowshoe trip 
up the hill here, and Benton's family uh, all were on randonnée equipment, and they went up on skis. That was much more civilized. Skied down back to the cabin, and uh, that that was what we did that day. And then skied back back to the parking lot on cross country skis. And I'm going to come back to that part uh, in a little bit here because I made a deal with their son. They got my phone back. Benton family. They're all getting ready to go. I've, I've already got my snowshoes on. I figure I'm going to go slower than them. So I went ahead and took off. Uh, took off. It sounds like I went really fast. That's that's an exaggeration. But uh, just started walking up the hill. And such a day. Um... I stopped along the way a couple of times here and just pan around to the scenery. A little reference. Me in the foreground there. Don't usually do the selfie thing, but thought that day warranted it. So there's, I go up, kind of up towards that little, there's a little outcropping of rocks up there that I went up to and stopped there to change into my alpine stuff. There goes Endra, 14-year-old son, blowing past me on his random A skis. So here I am at my little rock outcropping. And uh, we'll look around. Tracks up and then some ski tracks from the other day. So I change into my boots. Vintage 1986 Solomon racing boots. I still love those boots. Easy in, easy out. Warm, good performance. They don't hurt my feet. Put my snowshoes back into my backpack, or actually strapped it onto my backpack. And there came down to where I was, and he's going to film me. I was speculating on following my face. This is my second time actually skiing Alpine in eight years. And then this is what I was doing. So I was afraid I'd do all that work and fall on my face on the way down. But it ended up... Uh, working out basically so and these skis are pretty new to me too I hadn't really skied powder with them before but uh, it went fine I mean it was a blast I wish that hill had somehow magically become uh, 10 kilometers longer just like that it would have been great but it was it was fun worked for every one of those turns climbing up with those snowshoes so I went down the sort of the best part there and stopped and waited for for Indra. Here he comes. And then when he gets uh gets down there he follows follows me the rest of the way. I mean he, he goes down and I follow him down. Try to I make eights out of all of his turns. Now when we were going back on cross country skis I talked with him about my phone. He had a phone in his pocket. So I offered him a cash reward to climb up that hill with his cross-country skis. It was at the end of the day. It was, wasn't that much light even left. I had to go back to the cabin where I was staying because I had to make dinner for everybody. So, But he was saving up for something. I can't remember what. So the money sounded good. So he, he climbed up there on his cross-country skis and called my telephone a bunch of times. Uh, I described to him, you know, where I thought it would be. I thought it would be up there at the top. And he found it under about five centimeters of snow. So uh, the old dumb phones, because that's what it is, it's an old dumb phone, have the advantage that their battery lasts. Had it been an iPhone, I don't think it would have been found until spring. And... Um, so uh, I'd gone back to the cabin and had made dinner for everybody and, you know, was curious if he'd found it or not. And, uh, I don't know, a little bit after we had eaten, I got a message on my tablet uh, from uh, Bent. That's coming up here in a second where you'll see see the message but uh, he had indeed found it and the phone still worked 
and had a good charge and I still didn't have to charge it for almost a week after it had spent a, over a full day under the snow in seriously cold weather so so it stayed up there there's the message I got does that look familiar? Uh, that's my phone that just happened. I picked it up uh, two days later and so that little thing spent the night up there under the snow and lived to tell the tale. And those are pretty much the highlights of uh, the winter vacation there.